Olá pessoal, and welcome back to my channel and to my Lisbon apartment where you guys had a little bit of a behind the scenes sneak peek uh, in this recent video by the People of Lisbon channel. So you guys seem to really like coming backstage and finding out a bit more about my life here in Portugal. So I wanted to do another video that was a little bit different. So you guys have heard me talk a lot about why I love living in Portugal, because I do, but I don't generally seem to talk about the struggles that I've had or the challenges that I have faced while living here. A little while ago I made this video where I talked about the reasons of why I moved from London to Lisbon and lots of you really liked that video so even though this channel is dedicated to teaching Portuguese I know a lot of you follow me because you are ready to make the same move yourself. So I wanted to do another video on this topic this time looking at some of the things that I wish I had known before moving to Portugal and some of the strategies that I have put in place to make sure that I can overcome these challenges. Obviously I wouldn't swap my life in Portugal for any other, and I'm not trying to be a downer, but there's always going to be unexpected things that pop up when you make a move like this, so I really want my experience to help you. So if you're ready to make this move, you're thinking about making this move, or maybe you recently moved here and you're experiencing some of the same issues, give this video a like, hit subscribe, I'm going to go make a cup of tea, and let's get into it. All right, so the first thing that people don't really realise is that winters in Portugal are cold. Now, I'm not talking about reaching zero degrees or that we get snow or anything like that. Yes, the temperature outside is pretty mild, but inside the houses, they are just not built for the cold, they are built for the heat. Of course, it depends where you are living, but here in Lisbon, for sure, uh, apartments don't usually come with climatisation, which is a heating or cooling system. So when I moved into my apartment here that I bought in Lisbon, that was the first thing that I did. I installed an air conditioning system so we could be cool in the summer and warm in the winter. It's still not perfect because houses are generally drafty and they do let the heat escape um, and also electricity is expensive but it helps a lot. I also have a few other things in my house that are essential for the winter time so let me show you those. So this is my amazing washer dryer. Um, one of the things about it being cold in the winter time is that you will never get your clothes dry. <laughs> <laughs> they will all smell damp uh, and it just sucks. So getting this is an absolute game changer because we don't have much space in the apartment, but um, having this means that we can wash and dry and in winter time to have your clothes come out all warm and smelling like sunshine is incredible because usually apartments aren't equipped with these. Um, so yeah, having one of these, life changer. So coming into the bedroom, we actually have a electric blanket. This is amazing because we can switch it on before getting into bed and it makes the bed so toasty and warm. So even if the heating is off in the night, you can control it. And I actually got this one in the UK, but I'm sure you can get them here as well. This was just such an amazing, amazing purchase. So I recommend everyone to get one for the Portuguese winters. So coming into the bathroom then, this is a heated towel rail and it is another essential thing in the winter time because we can turn it on down here and make sure that it's nice and warm to actually dry our towels out because again in the winter time it will be almost impossible to get your towels dry um, just by hanging them um, on the back of the door or whatever so having this make sure that they actually dry and they don't smell and then also they're nice and cozy for you to get dry after your shower. So on the same train of thought, the thing you need to realise about the weather is that it is super changeable. So again, I can only comment on Lisbon because that's where I live, um, but basically layers are going to be your best friend. I often leave the house on a crisp morning and then I'm sweating by the time I get to where I'm going, or I leave the house on a boiling hot day and then I'm freezing in the shade or when the sun goes down. So I really have learnt that carrying a light layer, a cardigan, whatever it is, is really going to help. It's like adjusting my own thermostat. So, as somebody who makes videos for a living, this one is tricky. Cities in Portugal are noisy. So we have friends who live in blissful, peaceful spots in central Portugal and south Portugal, but Lisbon is not like that. On any given day we have construction, 
oh my god, construction is everywhere. We have sirens, we have neighbours shouting to each other across their balconies, we have dogs, I'm gonna get to that in a minute. So I usually film at lunchtime because the building next door to us is being gutted and it's been going on forever. It's very common for construction uh, projects to get delayed. So it can be really, really difficult. Um, we also had a really nightmare situation with a dog um, that was tied up on the balcony opposite ours um, and he just barked and cried all day and night and it was so sad. Um, this unfortunately is something that is really common here, not just in cities but also in the countryside. People have dogs as like alarm systems um, and sometimes they can be very noisy. And there isn't really a great deal that you can do. Um, we did manage to chat to those dog owners um, and they agreed they actually wanted to have the dog uh, adopted by somebody else so we did help them with that and it had a happy ending, he's now happily living somewhere else. But my main advice is if you are house hunting, particularly in Lisbon, make sure that you look out for unfinished building projects around you, check out whether your neighbours have dogs when you go to visit the place and just generally get a sense of how noisy the neighbourhood is. Um, we're going to be moving next year and being able to keep warm and being able to have peace and quiet are like the two things on the top of our list so fingers crossed that we'll get there. Let me know if this is resonating with you in the comments and if you have any more helpful advice with people who are moving be sure to share it. So next up we need to talk bureaucracy obviously. So the lesson here is that paperwork is going to be a nightmare but I've got some tips to help make it easier. So number one if you have any paperwork that needs doing whatsoever you need to get started as early as possible. Don't be leaving it anywhere near the deadline because particularly post Covid the length of time it's going to take you to get anything done is running into months. So our SNS numbers for example we sent off for them and it was six months before we had them back. So we've got marriage stuff to do, we've got I've got my citizenship to sort out so rest assured I'm going to be starting as early as possible to get those sorted. When you do have an appointment to get something bureaucratic done, make sure you go as early as possible in the morning. Don't be thinking that you can cram it into your lunch break or that you'll pop along when you have time. You need to actually dedicate an entire day to this right off the rest of the day and just really focus on getting this thing done. Get there early, Half an hour before it even opens would be ideal. People will already be queuing outside even if you have an appointment. Get there early, get your little ticket, take a book, take a podcast, whatever it is that you need to do to kill that time, but just make sure that you are there early and that you are refocused really on getting into your slot. My other top tip is to take every piece of paper that you've ever been given with you. I have a big folder where I just file away everything that I've ever been given here and I take it with me to every appointment no matter what it is because you just never know what you're going to be asked for. There's probably going to be something different that you didn't even know that you needed so it is just a good idea to just take it all with you. You also need to be okay with the fact that there's probably going to be something missing and you're going to have to go back another day. Just prepare yourself for that in advance. This is all about managing expectations and there isn't really a way to hack this. It really comes down to who is there on the desk at the day and whether they actually want to be helpful or not. So this is another reason why I suggest going early on in the day and not at lunchtime or the end of the day because people will be more grumpy. If you have somebody who can go with you, who knows what they're doing to either help you with the language side or if you are fortunate enough to be able to pay lawyers to do this kind of thing for you, I do recommend it. Not because it's impossible to do by yourself, but it is really, really hard. Even as somebody who speaks fluent Portuguese, I thought, oh, I'll be fine. I've lived here before. I know what I'm doing. And I was still in a pile in tears on the floor on many occasions. So if I had the chance to do it again, I would definitely get somebody to help me. So that brings me to my last point. Portugal is really going to help you practice patience. Now I did talk a lot in this video about how I really did want to move away from the hustle culture in London and that's one of the reasons why I was attracted to Lisbon. It was a place that was much smaller, the pace of life was much slower. So the flip side of that shouldn't really come as a surprise. It does take a lot longer to get anything done. The microwave is killing me! So whether it's calling customer service about something you need, paying your bill at the restaurant, getting your paperwork done like I just uh, mentioned. Now this is something that I am horrible at. I am extremely organised, efficient, I like to go boom 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 and I think that that's down to having lived in London and doing an agency job and needing to optimise 
every minute of my life to get things done. So what I really have had to learn here is to slow down and remember that I chose to come here because I wanted a different pace of life. So you really do have to take the rough with the smooth, learn to zen out in these situations. It is a trade-off, but it is a small price to pay for the privilege of living somewhere like this. So it's a work in progress, but I'm trying. So as I said before, I love my life in Portugal. I wouldn't change it for anything, but I really hope that some of this advice has helped you avoid some of the common pitfalls. I could have talked for about three hours on this topic, so if you do want a part two, let me know in the comments. I'd also love to hear about your challenges moving to Portugal. Maybe you've got some more helpful advice that you can offer the viewers. So be sure to drop these in the comments too. Practical Portuguese lessons will resume with me next week. So if you're looking to build your confidence and conversation skills in Portuguese as it's spoken, in Portugal, then make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. Obrigado por assistirem e até a próxima. Beijinhos pessoal. Tchau.